Hello. Hello. Awesome. We have... We, we are streaming. We are live. I've got my cat ready. Rare and stream. Yeah. Um, I got my novelty oversized can of coffee. Feeling, feeling good, feeling ready to, to do some coding. Uh, so yesterday, we got started working on this title screen, um, and in particular, this, this animation we got going. Um, I didn't get it finished. Um, it's actually quite annoyingly intricate. We, um, in order to get the scrolling effect, we have to use um, horizontal interrupts to adjust the scroll registers. Uh, yes, Nelly? Okay. Okay. To adjust the scroll registers uh, as, as the screen is being drawn. Um, so getting that right took quite a bit of tweaking, but uh, this is looking pretty good. Um, and I might, might adjust some of the positioning at some point, maybe, but it's looking pretty good. Now, what we want to do next, what I wanted to do next is I want to have the screen flash once both, uh, once, once both um, parts of the logo come scrolling in. Um, and then during the flash, I'm going to want to take the opportunity to turn the screen off and draw in um, some additional parts of the logo and I want to have the press start text also. Uh, oh, Nelly. Um, pardon, the press start text also be drawn in at that point and start flickering. Um, sorry, I uh, I haven't I haven't caffeinated today, so. I'm just getting getting all caffeined up and, and ready to roll. Um, but in the meantime, what's the best thing to do first? The best thing to do first. Oh, the other thing I wanted to comment on as well is, I want to have it so that when you press start, everything just immediately finishes. Instead of right now, everything just kind of stops what it was doing, uh, which is not ideal. Um, and there's also, I think, some bugs about, yeah, there's, there's some issues as well transitioning after the title screen into the game. So all of these things we're going to need to fix. Um, one other thing was, right, the, the um, colors here are wrong. That's something I'm not going to fix on stream. I'm going to fix afterwards because it's just uh, an issue with the source and material and the uh, conversion. Uh, program. <sighs> All right. So let's get started on that flash. Oh my gosh. Nelly, what is the matter? What's the matter, Nelly? Um, so, in order to do the flash, we're going to uh, <laughs> um, adjust. Adjust the background um, palette. <laughs> um, my cat's being really, really chatty today. I don't know what's wrong. I hope she's okay. If it keeps up, I might have to take her to the vet. She's just, she's always pretty chatty. She's part Siamese, um, which is a notoriously chatty breed of cat. But it really feels like it's it's next level today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good kitty. Oh, what a good kitty. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a good cat? What a good cat. Ugh. All right, 
So we're going to adjust the background palettes in order to, um, I'm not actually sure if, if there's a way to edit the palette from here. There would be a way to edit the palette either from here or just going right into ROM or, or RAM and editing RAM. Um, oh yeah, here it is. Background palettes, FF forty-seven. Um, so let's go look at those how the palettes are defined in uh, on the Game Boy. You just have to set a register to an appropriate number. Um, yeah, here they are. It's, uh, FF47. All we're going to want to do is lighten every color um, in, uh, in like phases. So in the first phase, right now we have uh, well right now the palette is, let me open up the calculator to show you. Um, we said it was E4, so E4 looks like this in binary. And if we compare that over here, what we see is bits 1 and 0 are 0, so they're white. Bits 3 and 2 are 1. So they're light gray. Bits five and four are two, so they're dark gray. And then bits six and seven are three, so they're black. Um, so I'm just going to want to progressively lighten this, which means that on the first phase, we're going to go from, uh, I just wrote it down over here. We're going to go from 11010, zero, zero, sorry, 0100 zero, 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 to 10, and then from there to 0100, and then finally to all white. Um, and the way I'm going to do this is actually, if you look at this, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you look at these palette numbers, you can actually see that, I don't want to say by coincidence, but kind of by, in, in a sense, kind of by coincidence, um, you get the palettes that you want just by shifting left twice. So you shift this number left twice, these two go away, everything else gets moved into the proper place, you get that. And then you do that again, and you get the same effect. That becomes the top uh, two bits, in other words, all the way up until you're at zero. Um, so. Add a state flashing state. I'm going to need to uh, have a variable. I don't want to fade. If I fade over the course of just the these four frames, it'll probably be too fast to even see. Like that's um what, four frames at 60 frames a second? Um, I mean, I guess we'll see, but my suspicion is that'll feel just like way too fast and it'll just look like the screen turning white, but. I guess let's find out. <laughs> it's, uh... So 
we're just going to see, well, is the state flashing? If it is, we're going to go to handle flashing. If, if it is too fast, what we'll do is, is we'll add a little timer that counts down. So all we're going to do here is I will have a variable which will store the palette. Get that that palette. Let's, as I said, uh, let's shift it to the left twice. Shift it to the left twice. We're going to write it in, and all I'm going to do is um, if the result of this last shift was zero, um, then we're, we're done. And we, I'm just going to move on to uh, I believe I've got a function for this or a procedure for this called start waiting. So if it's zero, we're going to start waiting, and then we return. Otherwise, we return, I should say. Um, and then the other thing, what other things do I need to do? I need to have a title screen power loaded in here, uh, or, or declared there. Um, I need to initialize it. What did I say this was? This was E4. That's the, the palette we're going to start with. Uh, and then I want to make sure that in my vblank interrupt, I properly set the palette. And technically, you don't need to do this in your vblank interrupts. Um, Forty-seven, FF forty-seven. Um, you can actually write the palette at any time. That being said, uh, it's best to do it during your vblink interrupt because you guarantee that the screen's not being drawn at that point, so you don't get any sort of tearing. Now, I do expect that this is not going to work properly because. Uh, the screen is just going to go white and stay white. We haven't restored the screen after this, but... Run. Hmm. Oh, I don't think I ever actually started flashing. That is, that's the other thing I have to do. Um, It's like very straightforward. Just start flashing code. You just write that into title screen state. Okay, we went wrong. Run. And that still didn't work. Oh, because I never called it, I think. <laughs> That's silly of me. Yes, I want to call start flashing. Reload ROM run. Yeah, like that that just looked instantaneous. And I imagine that if I I think that there's a debugger option that'll let you run. No, there isn't one that lets you run frame by frame. Otherwise it sort of show that it's not actually happening instantaneously. It just might as well be. Uh, which is not what we want. Um, some other. I mean, while I'm here, I might as well do some other stuff. I might as well uh, load. It's it's zero is what we do for the scrolling one, right? Yeah. Okay. So 
I'm going to, in order to get the scroll fixed, if you press enter in advance, I'm going to load configure these appropriately. Um, well, I'm not going to be able to see that yet, but you have to trust me that this is going to be useful once we fix things. <laughs> um, what can I do next? What, what should I do next? I should slow down the... Uh, the, the flash delay. So how that's going to work is it's it's just uh, da, 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 da. Um, I'm going to set the flash delay to be quite slow at first, um, like probably excessively so, and then speed it up uh, as is appropriate. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what the current flash delay is. I actually don't need to load this. Oh, no, I probably should, because I'll need to reset it. Um, so we're going to decrement it. Then we're going to say, oh, well, if we hit zero, then that means that we're done our delay. And that means, for one thing, we're going to reset the delay. Um, Then for another thing, we're going to uh, actually do the next step of the flash. Maybe step flash, um, uh, and that should that should do it. And then here I'm going to call this step flash. Seems good to me. Reload ROM. ROM. Let's see how this looks. Hmm. Not great, admittedly. Uh, what's going on there? Hmm. Oh, I see. We are breaking HL. Got it. Uh, there's probably no real good way around that. So let's just uh, Calling into the step flash routine. Um, yeah, there we go. That actually looks not quite as slow as I was worried it was going to look. Like maybe a little on the slow side. I'm just going to set the delay to 15 and see if maybe that's that's good enough. Maybe. Come on. I feel like, or maybe even 10. I should have a constant. Let me have a constant for this. Hmm? Now let's try 10. Yeah, there we go. That, that felt good. Um, so now we've got this flash working. So the next step 
is that once the flash finishes, that's when we're going to need to Once the flash finishes, that's when we're going to need to um, finish drawing things. Um, I'm actually wondering. Well, just to test this out, what I'm going to do is not call draw press draw the press start text initially. I'm going to draw it after the fact, once we're done done this flash. Um, still flash, here we go. What do I call start waiting? I don't want to, I want to call start flashing here. So the only place we call it is from Scott Flash. Perfect. So I'm going to go into, oops, I'm going to go over to, oh, oops, uh, start waiting. And here, I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to, um, oh, actually, this is this is an issue. Uh, I need to I need to use wait for view blank here instead of just halting. There's another bug. I can probably copy this wholesale from game, I think. And maybe game view blank is where it's at. Yeah. Um I should put this elsewhere. <laughs> um, but where was I? Title screen. We need to have this in place. So the problem was I was running. I'm surprised things didn't were working as well as they were. I was using halt to wait for the next frame, but halt is tr triggered after every interrupt. Unless I've misunderstood something about the halt instruction terribly. Um, but I don't believe I have. I'm just very surprised because using halt works fine when you only have the VBlink interrupt enabled, but when you have the stat interrupts enabled, I thought that they would fire as well. Um, and, and those would, would cause the game to run way too quickly. They'd cause it to run once for every line instead of once, or not for every line. Right, I guess it's only like twice, two or three times on the screen. So that's, that's probably what's going on. Nevertheless, um, We should fix this so that it's waiting properly. Yeah. Okay, so that's the one place where we used halt. So here in start waiting, wherever that may be, I'm going to call wait for the blank, call turn off screen, which is uh, over here, and just turn this, that just turns the screen off. Um, and then I'm going to call draw press start, and then I'm going to call turn on screen. It should do the right thing. And then, oh, one other thing. Um, I'm going to reinitialize the palette properly. So I believe it was E4 that I wanted to use. And I want to load that into, I believe it is. Oh, I'm never going to remember. Uh, well, oh, I just want to load into title screen palette, and then it'll 
get set as appropriate. Save the network that will built. Let's see if it runs. Oh yeah, it's it's much slower now. You can see. Um, I think I want to wait a little while with the screen off. Um, but you can see. Or let me yeah let me hit restart. The press start got drawn after the fact. But we do want to wait a little while with the screen off. I do want to speed up the motion of um, the logo as it scrolls in. It was running too quickly because it was running on the H blank interrupts as well as the D blank uh, until I just fixed that. Um, and how is the how is the the fade? I guess and the fade feels a little slow as well. Or the flash. So I'm going to set that to to five. Scroll. Where do I do the scroll? Um, handle scroll one. Here I decrement it twice. Um, I'm gonna, so I'm going to try instead of doing that. Let's, let's, let's double the speed of the scroll one. And similarly. Feels better. Uh, the flash feels good, and now I just need to make the the flash wait, uh, which was in start waiting. I believe is where I want to put it here. Um, so I'm just going to. I suppose the best way to do this is, you know, or at least the easiest, is just, I mean, I guess it would be nicer to have a loop. The only problem is, is I have to worry about, well, it doesn't look like, okay. Wait for V blank doesn't corrupt V. So I'm gonna have like just a little loop here. Um, I'm gonna wait for 30 frames. That's half a second. Felt pretty good, but I'm starting to think I'm going to want it to fade in as well. Let me look at this again. Maybe, maybe not. Um, then the other thing I wanted to do, the two two things remaining. Well, let me actually test one other thing before I say the two things remaining. Yeah, okay, that was good. And that worked too, which I was I'm glad to hear, uh, or glad to see. Um, the, actually, the this feels ever so slightly too long. I'm going to reduce that to 24. Um, the other thing I want to do is I the full logo is supposed to have some Japanese katakana here. Uh, so I'm going to get that, draw that during the flash as well. <sighs> All right, where was I? Here we go. I called this uh, file just fun, you know how it's pronounced phonetically in Japanese. I don't actually know if you know if I used a UTF-8 file name if uh, RGBDS could handle it, but 
I don't really care enough to find out. Uh, all right. So let me just pull open uh, this. My command prompt use RGBGFX. Uh, I'm gonna call this use that. <clears throat> there we are. Let me see if I can recall. The dimensions of this I believe were it was it was like 16 by something. <laughs> Is there a nice way to let's just reveal in File Explorer and does this show me? No, it doesn't. Bummer. Does this show this doesn't show me the dimensions in a place that I can easily find either? You're opening paint. Paint will show me the dimensions. Good old paint, never let me down. 48 by 16. Um so let's just draw that in. Easy peasy. 48 by 16 means it's going to be um, six tiles across and two down, so a total of 12 tiles. Um, at 16 bytes per tile, that's less than 256 bytes, nice and small. On the logo. Do I have the dot? I need to have the dot end so that we can compute the size correctly. All right, uh, and where are we going to? This should just fit its B, which means that this can be simplified a little bit, this loop here. Um, and where did I want these tiles to go? Interesting, I don't know where the, that 20 tile is coming from. Um, there's, not a, there's not an easy way to be like, oh yeah, that's where that tile is being used. I guess it would be one C, one D. No, I don't know where that tile is supposedly being used, but oh, no matter. Oh, it's being used as the space and press start, interestingly enough. Um, that's funny. <laughs> I probably shouldn't shouldn't be doing that. Let me fix that as well. Uh, da, 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 da. So that would happen here in font.asm, I thought. <laughs> Where do I define the table? Do I put it? I wouldn't have put it in here. Oh, it's in font.inc, that's why. It's in the include file. Um, let me add an entry for the space so that the space is no longer using some random tile. Uh, let's say AF. It seems like a good one. I did that. So then go back to title screen um, and let's load the katakana uh, over here at tile 20. It's not hugely important where we load it, but there's something nice about putting it like a nice uh, what is tile 20? 9200. Just like a nice round number, you know? Um, and then we're going to draw it. Uh, I'm going to go, I suspect, right over here, maybe? That's probably good. Let me go take a look at the logo itself and see sort of roughly where it's supposed to appear. Um, Sort of, actually, let me open it up in paint so I can measure things. So 
So it appears roughly, what is that, 13 pixels to the right. We'll round up to 16 pixels to the right. Uh, and like right, right down the middle, right down the middle. Okay. So I'm just going to write this function, draw Capitana logo. And it should be pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to, we don't need to load HL with that. And instead we're going to load, I mean, it's actually going to look more like the one, the routines that draw the, yeah. Let me delete that actually. I just copy and paste one of these. It's going to be somewhat more accurate. Um, like a, a better, a better correspondence, I should say. Instead of starting at B0, we're going to start at 20. We're going to have these two constants, katakana height, katakana width. Um, and instead of drawing it from 9800, we're going to start drawing it from, well, we'll start here for now, 98 to B, and see how that goes. I think it, will, it shouldn't be too bad, but, and then we again need to add katakana width. Um, and let me just define those constants up here. I said before it was uh, six tiles across and two tiles high. to draw that while the screen's off and we've drawn the press start text. So draw press start, we call it here. I'm also going to call it draw Capicano logo. And let's see how this turned out. <laughs> hmm, it didn't seem to work. Why not? Uh, oh, we didn't load the tiles in, that's why. Load. Run. Hmm. Still not quite right. Oh, because I loaded the ping and not the graphics file. That's that's what happens when you don't convert your pings into Game Boy format. <laughs> They just look like garbage. I don't think I reloaded. Reload. Yeah, there we go. That's that's what I'm looking for. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Next, what do I want to do? I want to. I'm actually wondering if it would look a little bit better the next row down. Let me try that. So start at 98.4 B instead of 2 B. I suspect that'll look too far down and this is better, but I just want to see. No, I think I like that better. There we go. That is, uh, that is what I'm going for right there. So then what is left to do? Um, well, I need to fix the coloring, of course, and I want to get the text, the press start text flash. Um, and I'm just going back and forth on the best way to do that. Um, um, 
It's probably, well, it's not probably. I'm probably just going to do it by taking advantage of this same stat interrupt and using it to flicker the palette. So in the interrupt itself, all I do is get the, um, press start palette and write it into oh, FF47. Um, and then under waiting, here in waiting, I need to adjust it. And I probably want it to fl flicker about once every second, so that's 60 ticks. Um, I call this like flash, but maybe I should call it, maybe I should just call this delay so I can reuse it. Call this fade delay. places I'm going to need to update this. Um, is that it? No, it looks like it's it. Uh, and then I'm going to have this flash delay. I really should have called this fading from the get-go, because that's, that's really what it is. I mean, it's kind of a flash, but Flash is start. Flash is confusing because the the press start text is going to um, is going to flash. So I should I should call this fading so there's no no ambiguity. Oh, flash start. I'll call this like step fade. And uh, am I using flash anywhere else? Handle flashing, you gotta be handle. Fading. And step fade. Mm -hmm. No, nope. and we still have, we're still calling these flashing. Let's bring those to fading. Uh, flash. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so now, finally, we can get to this, this waiting code. So under start waiting, what else am I going to do? I'm going to load a flash delay and load that into the line. And What's the nicest way to do this? Do I do I actually need to do I actually need to keep track of whether the tile of the palette is on or off, or can I do something else, something like cleverer? Uh, as as horrible as it is, <laughs> um, like if I invert all the bits, no, that won't work because that'll turn the background black. Um, I mean, I could just invert the top two bits. That might be the, the way to do it. So that way they'll go. Yeah, that's. It's kind of a it's kind of a wild hack, but I'm I'm sort of enjoying writing bad code for this for the title screen. The nice thing about the title screen is that it's isolated from the rest of the game. It does one thing. 
the code doesn't need to be as ultra maintainable and I can just kind of have fun with it a little bit. So I'm going to go here into handle waving. Um, I'm going to load a, a delay. I'm going to decrement A. If it's heck, I'm going to do this. I'm going to uh, if it if we hit zero, I'm going to call flash text, and that's it. So then I go into flash text. And what am I going to do? I'm going to restore what the delay was. Um, and then I'm going to start palette. Get this, pr this uh, start palette, which I did declare, right? Oh, maybe not. <laughs> uh, press start palette. All I'm going to do for the press start palette, which I'm going to initialize uh, and start waiting, In, in the palette as we have it defined, like the normal palette, these two bits are set to one. So they are uh, black. They're, they're two bits, one, that's, that's three, that's black. We want to make them white. So all I'm going to do, hi, how's it going? Uh, so all I'm going to do is get that palette. And I'm going to do a an XOR. And I just want to show you. So XOR is exclusive OR. Um, so what this means is that it's going to compare A, or not compare, it's going to take A and it's going to take this number. And it's going to go bit by bit. And if either in either of them, the bit is set, but not if both of them uh, the result will be set. So it's it's probably easier to show you. 0 XOR 0 equals 0 because neither is set. 1 XOR 0 equals 1 or 0 XOR 1 equals 1 because one of the two is set. But 1 XOR 1 equals 0. So what's going to happen here is these are all 0. So because they're both 0, like on the right hand side, then the uh, it's just going to put whatever was already in the palette in those slots there without touching them. But then what's going to happen here is they're both 1, so they're going to invert the bits. If the palette previously there was 0, it's going to be 1. And if it was 1, it's going to be 0. So this is going to cause the press start text to flicker uh, from black to white. And we can do that without using like an additional variable keeping track of whether or not it's black or white. Um, so it's just a neat little trick. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Um, and then the press start palette will get, and then we reset the flash delay. So um, 
as we continue waiting and we'll do the right thing. And then we set the palette there on the appropriate line of the screen where we're drawing it. So fingers crossed, this all works. I gotta reload my ROM. I gotta hit run and now I gotta pray. Oh boy, that did not work at all. It broke everything. How did it break everything? Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Um, that doesn't even make any sense. I didn't touch a lot of things. <laughs> huh. Hmm. Hmm. How annoying. <laughs> um, and the press the press start isn't working. Geez, nothing worked right there. That should work, he says. Well, the flicker, the flash worked, but the, that's all. So let me go take a look. At this figure out why the flashing is not working, because uh, that's like a good first step. Let me go see if we're ever calling flash text. Okay, so this is getting called every once in a while. We write that into a delay. We get the palette. We invert the top bits. And then we write it into press start palette. So that, that feels good. Okay. And this is. This is the right memory address for the background palette. Um, let me go see if stat2 is ever called. That's, an, I guess, another important question. Oops. Yeah, stat2 isn't getting called. That's curious. Why would stat2 not get called? <laughs> is, uh, is stat1 ever getting called? No, it's not getting called either. What did I do to break break my stat intros? Like heaven knows, I didn't I didn't touch any of that, did I? Whew, and this is one of the one of the not so great things. Well where do I first configure my my uh, stat intros? Not start waiting, start title screen. I call init handlers. I mean, are my stat and traps enabled? Let me go look at the IO map. That is set to do that in the cor correct line. Um, that sounds reasonable to me. That looks reasonable to me. And yeah, th these are both enabled. Um, huh, what's going on? Why wouldn't I call the stat interrupt? Very mysterious. Yeah, there's, I mean, and like that explains the, the visuals we're seeing. We're not seeing the different scroll directions. Um, why would the stat interrupt not get called? Let me go see what my stat handler is. What's that ease uh, OEF zero? Uh, I mean nothing. <laughs> uh, which is a concern. Like my dummy dummy handler or whatever. Like where's that? That's that uh, Yeah, let me go look for um, my my actual underlying stat handler, stat int. Let me go see if that's getting called. Okay, so that's getting called. And we're pulling the stat OEF0, and we're calling that, and we're jumping to it, and we're just running some garbage code. So somehow, I'm not configuring my stat handler.
first. Set him on top. I have no idea how I broke this. My gosh. Um, let me go set a breakpoint on this. Set access breakpoint when it's written. And let me hit reset and run. So what are we? Where is this? This is in the stat. Sure. Uh, let me clear that breakpoint. This is in B blank, right? Um, that looks correct. Let me go take a look. C's title screen. What did I do? I get the low of the stat handler, which is, I mean, is that where stat one is? Mm. Oh, that's why. Oh my god. When did I break that? I can't. I have no idea when I broke that. That's the problem. Um, I was just giving a, a garbage, a garbage breakpoint, um, not breakpoint, sorry, a garbage stat handler. I don't know how that happened. Um, let me get rid of those breakpoints as well. Uh, now, oh, here we've got a bug. Um, I didn't initialize the Yeah, that checks out. Okay. I don't know if I actually need to well, whatever. Not important. Let's reload, let's hit run, let's see how it goes. The delay is a little bit, a little bit too long, so I'm just going to adjust that, but on the whole, that is basically what I was going for. There we go. That is... You know, maybe need some like copyright text or something like that at some point. I don't know how important that is, but it might make it look a little bit more official. But and then does it load into the game properly? It loads into the game perfectly. Awesome. That is uh, that's the title screen. <laughs> oh, one other thing I need to check. I need to make sure that if I interrupt it, it does the right thing, and it does, which I, I expected. Um, cool. All right. <laughs> that went down nice, nicely, smoothly. Great, perfect, perfect little little excursion. So next, what do I need to do? Um, I just need to save those changes. So that's going to involve what? I can get rid of this nicer title screen here because I have that now. that elsewhere. Um, so lots of, oh, let me, um, let me add that particular change in separately. Use proper tile for space. And honestly, uh, let me fix that. Start scroll two, just like a bunch of white space. I should probably configure my editor to clear that out automatically from here. But title screen. Um, and now I'm just going to add all those graphics files and all those hidden files to the repo. And let's do a title screen. Committed that later, earlier, I mean. Uh, but now we are doing good. So, what is left? Um, what's the next thing we're going to do? I think the next thing that I want to do is to add support for multiple levels. Right now, there's only one, one map, one level. Um, obviously, we want to spice it up. Um, so, that's, that's probably the next change that I'm going to make. Um, 
And I'll probably make that change. I don't know if I'm going to make that. I'll probably make that on Tuesday. I'm going to aim for uh, alpha four to have multiple levels. That's that's going to be the big the big task for alpha four. Uh, the big task for alpha three was the, uh, the eight by four tiles and the title screen, um, and we got both of those in this week. So on Monday, I'll I don't know. I'll take it take it nice and slow on Monday. And, you know, maybe add something like the extra lives of particular stores or scores. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's about it for today. Um, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Uh, yeah, I, and I hope you have a have a great weekend, um, and I look forward to streaming again on Monday. Cool. Take it easy. I am out.